button's not. The button's the button isn't buttoning. What? I, what, what? I, I can't dance with no music. Oh, no. I know. Was, I was thinking the same thing. I had dancing. It was just working. All. I was testing it prior to. Oh man. All right. Well, uh, this is <laughs> welcome <laughs> every. It, it says it's running and it's not doing it. That's so crazy. All right. Welcome everybody to the. <laughs> Business Geeks podcast for dancing without music. This is how we do in the showbiz. You dance without music. You uh, you make music videos without music. You listen to the Business Geeks podcast without music. Happy belated Halloween, everybody. Uh, I'm Super Joe Pardo, superjoepardo.com and indiepodcasters.com. I'm joined by my two wonderful co-hosts, Jennifer Crawford, the co-founder of Sparent.co. And Samantha Riley of Samantha Riley Global. Uh, this week we are nerding out about the employee mindset versus the CEO mindset, and how uh, you know the differences, and I guess how you can get your mindset straight for where you need to be headed. He- be headed, no, be, be headed, comma headed <laughs> with your business. Uh, <laughs> be head, no, I don't want to go there either. All right, anyway, anyway, my dings are still not working. I don't know what happened here. I will have to reboot some software. But in the meantime, uh, Sam, how are you doing down in Australia? Is the future safe yet? Uh, did did the uh, that's right. You guys don't have an election down there going on tomorrow. No, which we would do be like not have an election New Year's going Eve on. Eve kind of thing going no, on. Oh, big things happening <laughs> over there. It's there so is. quiet here compared. <laughs> it, yeah, well, I mean, quiet, honestly, is not bad. I thing. don't have a problem with that. I do not have a problem with that. How are you guys going over there with your crazy election time? How are you doing, Jen? Uh, you know- <laughs> You know, it's a little nerve wracking. I'll be honest. It was, uh, very, I was very distracted today. I've been hearing sirens all day and I'm not <laughs> sure why. Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I've heard there've been reports that, uh, you know, there's the, the Trump train folks are taking over our beltway, which is one of the main highways around here. I don't I guess know. They don't have jobs. It's chaos. It's oh. chaos. Well, you know, time will tell, but this is, you know, this is a, a, a really strange time in our political history. Mm. It, it it is it is a very it's very strange. I mean, like, four years ago was strange too, and it's it's even more it's strange. Even now. more strange. L- even living into it uh, is is just been. It's like twenty twenty never ended. From twenty, it's like twenty sixteen never ended, <laughs> or twenty fifteen really, because that's when all this craziness really started. Was the uh, end of twenty fifteen? So it's been. Oh, uh, I think twenty twenty is just absolutely. <laughs> Blown I mean, all like everything out of the water. <laughs> it's the it's the peak of of this craziness, and we're 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 gonna find out if there's another peak right behind it or not, um, which they unfortunately probably will be. Um, you know, I, uh, speaking to to that, I was lo- reading this morning an article about, um, and I'll get to the business side of things, but the prolongedness of COVID symptoms and people that are long haulers apparently. Like, I, I mean, I've heard like bits and pieces, like anecdotal stories of people that had these COVID uh, symptoms and stuff. But uh, but I'll, I'll tell you, like, even like my aunt who uh, works at our shop, you know, she she tested positive for for months after she uh, initially wow. had symptoms of it. Yeah. Which keeps people out of work. So to, to bring it back to the business side of things, that creates a big problem when you start talking about millions of people potentially having getting the virus and then having like prolonged fatigueness. There was one story about a um, 19-year-old or something, 18-year-old, who was a track star running 10 miles a day. Now he needs help with his mom to walk a quarter mile around the block. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So – you know things like that. Um, or how is that going to affect you know the workforce and people being able to get to work and stay working? And mm. long term, you know, uh, outlook is not is not necessarily great. And this is a small portion of the people. Like we're, they're talking like two, three, four percent. But like when you start extrapolating that, extrapolating that over millions of people, it becomes a problem. <laughs> you know, that's not that's not point zero four percent. That's mm. like four or five percent. You know, that's that's not good. Um, so yeah, hopefully that doesn't uh, continue as a as a thing that's going to happen. But 
I mm. mean, all signs point to <laughs> if I shook the magic eight ball, all signs are pointing to probably. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so this week, Jen, it was your episode to uh, pull a topic together, and you're wanting to talk about the employee mindset versus the CEO mindset, which I think there's a there's a ton to unpack there, mm-hmm. uh, especially as you make that transition from like I gotta do it all to I gotta be able to distribute it all and get the systems in place, which is right up my alley for sure. Yeah. I was very excited, Jen, when I saw today's topic sheet. I was I'm, I'm very excited. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you were excited? Yeah. I almost opened a bottle of champagne. I was that excited. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> People out there, you don't know the pressure I'm under to come up. You know, we're, we're all under here in 2020. I mean, to come up with a topic, but but two other people have to, you know, approve and they have to like it. Or not approve in my case. Or not approve, <laughs> or not approve and pretend to like it. Um, it's a lot of pressure. But you know what? You know, having your business is a lot of pressure too. So, you know, I'm, yeah, used, I'm cool. used to it. I'm used to it. But I'm glad you liked it, Sam. I, I figured yeah. you would. I love this topic because as small business owners, I mean, yeah, thank you, Joe. They, they got that d- the, the, thing the working. Thing. Yeah, it, it, we worked. Yeah, I was just, I was just as surprised as you are. <laughs> Congra- congratulations. Uh, but I, I think small business owners can relate to the fact that when we start our businesses, the typical smart, uh, smart, this typical small business owner is bootstrapping things, right? So we really don't have a lot of choice in the beginning. We have to do everything. We're we're wearing all the hats. We're playing all the roles. We are the marketing and the sales department and the you know bookkeeping department. But what happens is eventually our business grows, hopefully, and we get busier. And at that time, if we don't start really re-envisioning that role that we're playing in our business and put on the, that CEO hat, um, then what we will end up doing is burning out, sabotaging our success, limiting our business growth and success potential. So really the CEO mindset is just all about embracing the role as leader and visionary of your company and understanding exactly what that means in terms of what are the things you should be working hard on. Because I think a lot of times we work hard on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And that is why our success is so slow or it's so stumped, you know, stuck someplace because we're working hard on the wrong things. So I think when you when you learn to sort of adopt that CEO mindset, you get real clear on what you should be working on and you work towards that goal of only working on the things you should be working on. And it's not a switch you turn on and it's not something that happens overnight. It can be a process. That's fine. It was a process with me and my first business. Um, but that's really when you when you finally accomplish it, that's really where you're going to see limitless growth in your business. You're going to be able to scale. You're going to be able to work less, make more money, you know, get those leadership skills. I mean, really, really see your vision become a reality. Totally. I think that I know that you said that we obviously we can't wear this CEO hat right from the beginning when we are bootstrapping our business. But I would challenge that even though we can't, I believe, I truly believe that we need to have this mindset right from day one, that what I see way too often is people saying, I can't afford that because you know, we're we're little or I need to cut that out or I can't, you know, implement that instead of thinking, okay, as a CEO to be able to take my company to where it needs to go, what do I need to do to be able to implement that? What do I need to be able to do to get that done, to be able to bring that person on? And I think that we should be implementing this mindset right from day one rather than from, you know, thinking that it's something that happens down the track. Bingo. I totally agree. Even if you can't implement it completely, the vision, yes, you should start with it. Because just think about it in terms of um, something as uh, simple as pricing. If you're thinking like a CEO when you set your pricing, you're thinking, oh, eventually I'm going to have to support a team and I'm going to have to have technology and systems in place. I'm going to have added expenses. So maybe that even influences your pricing infrastructure from the very beginning. Um, Because you're right, Sam, a lot of people use the excuse not to build a team because they don't want to diminish their profit, right? They, Mm -hmm. I I want to keep it all to myself, (laughs) Mm -hmm. even though as one person, a single person team, you can only grow so much. You are limited. 
So if you think of your team as an asset, it is something that's going to be able, you know, they're going to allow you to exponentially grow your company. Totally, totally. I was reading some really important stats last night while I was doing some research on the amount of uh, a wage that CEOs take out of their company rather than the CEOs that are employed by the company. And it was absolutely astounding because, as we know, CEOs of big corporations are paid handsomely. You know, I was looking at sort of, you know, 20, 30, 40 million dollars a year. There was CEOs, or what we call like founders, you know, that do what we do, that are still maybe taking out, you know, years down the track. They might be doing, you know, a turnover of 15, 20 million, and they're still taking only 60, 80, $100,000 out of their company. And I think that this is a really interesting. I don't have an answer for you here, but I found that this was really, really interesting into the, the mindset difference of what we need to do to be able to take our company to where it goes. Well, I, I mean, I can I can maybe offer some insight into that. So first off, if you're uh, if, when you're when you're building your business, like you're you're used to the like you're probably used to like not having a lot of money, right? You're you're used to that mindset of okay, if I pay all my employees, uh, I guess I'm not going to have any money this week. And I go home and that's just, you know, I got to figure out how how we're going to pay the bills next, you know, for next week and 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 all that, right? So that mindset creeps in and, and it, you know, you kind of become like the, the squirrel with the, you know, with the acorns, with the nuts and trying to like hoard as much as you possibly can because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. It's going to mm-hmm. bring some kind of challenge that's like, Oh no! Like, how is this? How are we going to get through this challenge? And and is there enough money there to make it happen? Versus the the corporate CEO that like comes from the corporate background where there's always enough money. Like, worst case, we'll just sell. We'll just sell a piece of the of the of the you know IP or something. And next thing you know, the money's there, and at least I get I got my money right. So it's a it's a very different mentality. Um, that you would come from, you know, out of even out of the gate, right? Even just in the sense of like, I go to work and I get a paycheck, and like, there's always a paycheck there. And okay, if if I get laid off or the company shutters or something, I don't get jack. I can go find another job. That's my right to do it. And in the states, I don't know if in Australia there is unemployment, and it's not the best. It's not the greatest system ever, but there's some kind of mini parachute for at least a little bit of time to bring in some kind of cash so as long as you're not you're somewhat fiscally responsible you can make it you know make through Mm. totally look i i I don't think that many small business owners that you know and we are talking about the ceo mindset can pull 35 million out of their business um (laughs) I, and I get that. I just found that it was really, I had nothing actually to offer with that. I just thought it was really interesting. <laughs> it is really interesting. Well, I love stats. You know, I love stats. So um, I thought you were going to come out with this stat, which is a little different. And it's, um, it's a stat that uh, says that about 86% of small business owners bring home a paycheck less than 100000 so 86%. There's also a high percentage are, that are working well more than 40 hours a week. Okay, so mm-hmm. set that aside. That number increases, the revenue increases exponentially the, based on the size of their, empo- the number of employees. So we're talking a single business owner, no employees, makes less than 100,000, 86% of the time. But as soon as they start hiring, that number goes up. So you start you start seeing the revenue in the millions when you see a higher number of employees. So this is, again, a business owner that I assure you has stepped into that CEO role and has grown and scaled their company by a combination of delegating and systems and training and protocols mm-hmm. and all of, the, all of those things, um, that whole infrastructure that needs to be in place so that you can handle um, exponential growth. So I thought it was interesting because I think sometimes as business owners, we tend to think a little small. We mm-hmm. don't want to, we don't want to give up control. We want to, you know, we think we're going to hang on to more money if we don't hire out. Um, we're working so hard. We never slow down to really streamline our operations. And ultimately, uh, like we will fail. Uh, mm-hmm. In 10 years, it's something like 8% of businesses survive the 10 year mark. That is, yep. that means 92% yeah. of businesses fail within 10 years. And I am sure 
it's because of these things, the, the, lack of, the lack of systems, the lack of delegation. 100%. You cannot, you cannot grow a business without delegation. Yeah. You just cannot. Can't. It's proven in every single corporation that's in the, you know, whatever, whatever those fancy lists are, Forbes or I don't know what. If you look at any of those big companies, they've all got multiple staff because you cannot grow a business without delegation. And this is, I think, the number one reason that so many people fail is they just try and do everything themselves. And, and it means that there's no vision. There's no um, strategy because all, all people are doing is just constantly chasing their tail every single day and actually not going anywhere. So sad. It's so it sad. It, it is. is. It's so sad. It is. Hurts my heart. Hurts my small business love and heart. Ouch. Uh, uh, well, you know, the, to go along with what you were saying about the millions of dollars paid to to CEOs, uh, it was brought up uh, by another another podcast that I listened to about uh, like how Disney just did another round of layoffs this past week, right? And like, how much money would it would it have cost to keep those people on, uh, like furloughed and and paid their insurance for another year, right? While Disney sorts out their thing, right? And it's like, well, it would have cost you know, it would have cost uh, I don't know, sixty, you know, maybe a hundred million or something like that. Like it, that's you know, a lot of money until you realize that in twenty eighteen, the CEO Bob Iger was paid in benefit in benefit 65 million for one year of operation so mm. it's like yeah i think i think somebody could have could have found the money and like made good on it and then literally put somebody you know put some of those cast members in front of the castle shoot the thing and say hey you know we're we're, we're getting taken care of you know and 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 come visit disney world as soon as, as soon as you can as soon as you feel safe as soon as uh we have more of our operations open please please do please do so you know, it's, it's like it turned that into a PR thing and it would have been great. But mm. uh, but yeah, so it, so it's just to, to play off the, the idea that uh, the amount of money it, it, it's I mean, the amount of money that's out there is is is, is purely insane. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, as you as you grow, you you have to realize that there is other people that you need to put in place to do those things. And if uh, those other you know pieces of the operations make them smoother. I mean, let's think of face it. Uh, you know, Walmart, the Walmart reader, right? <laughs> There's somebody, you know, somebody's paid to like stand in front of Wal at the beginning of Walmart and just greet people as they come in. I mean, they have them at Home Depot too, right? The the house is home improvement. I don't know if you have Home Depot and no, but we have bu we have stuff? Bunnings and we have someone that stands at the front and says hello and goodbye to everyone. I'm assuming yes. that's what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, and and like, oh, I'm you know, what are you looking for today? I won't walk you there, but I will point you in the right direction. Like, you know, I'll mm -hmm. get you the aisle number or something. Like, that's a job, and the reason that's a job is because customer satisfaction goes up, obviously, or they wouldn't do it, right? But they, but just be thinking things uh, through like that. Like, where could we spend a little bit of money, increase customer satisfaction? Action, keep people coming through the door um and then also ultimately like helping the team right helping the the team as a whole because you have less people being stopped in other areas of a store other areas of the business to to fulfill that need that need <laughs> or in the case of home depot never be found because you can never find people when you actually need them <laughs> in that store <laughs> shots so fired. <laughs> so I think that I think that one of the the biggest things when you brought this topic up Jen that I thought it, is that we need to we need to get really clear on what that mindset is right from day 1. So I went back and had a look at, you know, what is a CEO and what is their role? And their role is things like short and long-term strategy. Yep. What is the vision, setting the vision and the mission for the company, compute, communicating on behalf of the company. And I think that this, because we need to look, okay, this is working for other companies. How can we take that into our business to use that to grow? And I think that, you know, to start there and then say, who do we need to be able to help us to be able to, you know, implement this strategy, you know, cre create this mission, mission, mission and vision. Vision. <laughs> I know, right? Um, you know, that's what, that's how we need to be thinking. 
Yeah, absolutely. As as the CEO, yeah, you should be coming up with with the growth strategies, uh, the whole vision of your company, and then your team can implement. I mean, that's that's the ideal thing. Um, as the CEO, your ideal role is to is to lead, have the vision, and then have a stellar team to help you carry it out, which is all part of leadership. I mean, it's a beautiful thing when it's done mm, right. It really is. Absolutely. So, Jen, what do you think is the number one question that we should ask ourselves as business owners if we were thinking with a CEO hat on rather than a small business owner's hat? I think going back to putting you on the spot. Yeah, no, no, because I I I talk about this all the time. You know, with Spirit, we talk about this a lot, a lot with our clients when we're working uh, with them when they're delegating for the first time. So really, you know, one of the exercises we have them go through is to, uh, you know, brain dump everything that needs to be done in their business, all the things that they're doing, all the things they want to do but don't have time for. And then we have them categorize them into CEO tasks and non-CEO tasks, right? What are the things that only you, as the CEO, the leader, the visionary of your company, the only those things, what are those things? Put them in, in one bucket. And then everything else can be delegated with the right, you know, with standard operating procedures in place, with the right systems in place, with the right team in place. Again, it doesn't happen overnight, but if you can just envision it and start the process and get two or three things off your plate, two or three critical SOPs documented. Um, look at your systems, streamline as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Then you're you're on the right path. But really, you need to be clear on the things that you should be working on because too many of us are working too much, too hard, but on the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I said, it's so yeah. easy to do. It's so yeah. easy to do. And I find also it's not just worth, sorry, Joe. let me no, just no, say no. this and then I'll hand it over. No, no, it's no. not just doing the wrong things. I think it's also asking the wrong questions. Oh, good one. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> no, a- absolutely. Uh, Tim Gillette says, welcome to Home Depot. If you need something, just ask our regular customers who know the store better than us. And that that is quite true. <laughs> that is quite true. Uh, they People do know the store better. Actually, a lot of times I don't even bother asking people. I pull out my smartphone, go to homedepot.com, and I search for what I want on their website, and then it tells you where it's in stock, in which aisle, in which bin. Um, you know, I, I I think to go along with what you're what you were saying about you know the SOPs and stuff. Uh, when you look back at like businesses that were able to grow, like uh, you know one one th- one channel I love to watch is the Company Man. Uh, I don't, have either of you heard of the Company Man on YouTube? I've not heard of it. Nope. All he does <laughs> is talk about companies, like it. You know, like the story of uh, like the story of Nike, the story of th- like this company, that company, and and all of that. Like I'm pulling it up right now so people can see because it's it's really good. Uh, it's really good information. He does a ton of research on each of the the topics. So like here's the story. You know, Energizer versus Duracell, C- uh, CCs. What ha- you know, decline of CCs. What happened? Pokemon, Cartoon Network, Kmart, Blockbuster, Radio Shack. What happened? All these things, right? And when you look at like the rise of a lot of these companies, it's like it's, you know some of them were going from like one location to like five locations to 20 locations to 50 locations to 100 locations. Why? Because they had their systems and processes created and they they systematized everything they possibly could and invested the money to grow as fast as they possibly could to gain as much market share before somebody else figured out, oh, I could do that too. (laughs) Hmm. I can do that too and create a business that rivals it, right? Um, so, I mean, there, yeah, this I highly recommend. Each episode is like 10, 11, 12 minutes long. But if you want to learn about all these different businesses like and what they did right and what wrong, uh, it's, it's incredible amounts of information there. Uh, and it's all just like you know it's 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 not over the head it's all like images and things of that nature love it joe gold yeah like it it really is like you you should totally go watch the company man he's he's i think he's a kid like not a kid kid but like maybe 18 years old 19 years Ah, old something like that doing this yeah he's been doing it for a couple of years really good uh over a million subscribers now totally deserves it um, so anyway, point being is, is, is that's, that's the things that's going to get you to the point where like you could build a franchise, you could build more locations, you can build, like you can do all those things 
if you ha like speed up the process, not only for your customers to come in through the door, but for you to be able to deal with the least amount of things in a day, right? And uh, and like, how many fires are you putting out a day? Like, how do you figure out how do we how do we categorize those fires? So at least we can figure out like, okay, we're putting out this you know this category of fires like a hundred times a day. Well, I need to get an expert in there, right? I need to find somebody else that can help me figure out those problems. So it's like that's where you know that's where I can come in or or you know Sam or Jen and and work with all of you uh, with the figuring out those how to figure out those, those where those problems are and then how to fix those problems so mm. that you can move to that next step so it's not but it's not always that it's not always that right sometimes it's as simple as just for, like taking the time and saying okay i'm gonna take uh, a day out of, i'm gonna move my my tuesday and i'm gonna move that to saturday or or i'm gonna take my friday and move that to saturday and on friday i'm just gonna go sit out the counter i'm just gonna go sit and listen right I'm gonna go uh, pull a di you know a Disney Imagineer and just go ride the ride 20, 30 times with a whole bunch of strangers so I can hear what they're saying about the ride. Right? Those are the things that you you know you need to do to really hear uh, hear what's going on in the business. Ta having those convers those difficult conversations, and I feel like we're getting farther away from the <laughs> the mindset problem. But but it's part of like getting comfortable with the idea that you might not know everything that's going on and you might not have all the solutions. And once you understand that you don't, that's, you know, you can start to go mm, and do the research to that figure right out what, there. You, you know, what you don't know. That right there. What excites me, I think, the most about the CEO mindset when I see somebody like finally grasp the importance of it is when they reimagine the trajectory of their business. And let me give you an example. So, we had a, a discovery call at Sparent with someone who is a sales consultant. And this person has a, a methodology that they use and it's very effective. And um, so she was working with each of her clients individually, kind of like on a consultancy basis. And so when we were talking about her like stepping into that role of CEO and I was like, well, imagine that you don't work with every client. Like what if you trained your, you know, a team uh, trained them to use your methodology. And all of a sudden now you're just, you're training and you're leading your team and you're coming up with, you know, uh, growth and marketing strategies, but you're sending them out. And all of a sudden now it's, the business is not limited to how many clients you can serve in a week or a day, but it's only limited by the size of your team and, and how, how uh, great they are under your leadership. And it was like this huge light bulb, you know, went off in her head and, you know, she's completely going for it. Like she, she saw the potential and saw like how she could pull back from her business, but step into that role of CEO, actually work less and see her vision, um, completely come to fruition and make a bigger impact, which is really what most business owners want to do. They want to mm. make a difference in the world. They want to make mm -hmm. an impact. They want to make you know, they, they want to, you know, leave a legacy and how much of an impact can you have? And if it's just you holding on to everything. hundred percent. Yeah. You're going to be really limited. Yeah. So those stats, Jen, um, if we don't put on that CEO hat, put that really embrace that CEO mindset, what was, I know that you're the stat queen and you'll remember this. What was the percentage of businesses that in the first, there was like the first year or the first 10 years that these companies um, go under? 92% uh, will go under within 10 years. 92%. Mm. So that's almost all. That's almost mm. all. I mean, it's a scary enough statistic that, I, you know, if I had heard that statistic when I first, you know, started my first business, maybe, um, maybe I would have been scared off. Maybe not. I'm stubborn, but, um, <laughs> but, it, but it's, it's a bit frightening. It's a bit frightening. I mean, and if we're not willing to look at what we might be doing not so well in our business, uh, I, I can't tell you how many business owners I talk to every week that are stressed out. They don't love their business as much as they used to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're 
They're mm. overwhelmed. Um, they don't know even if they can take any more business because they are so maxed out on their time. Um, they're working weekends. They're working way more than eight hour days. Mm -hmm. They haven't had a vacation because it's so hard to get away. Um, you know, their, their time with friends and family has, has really been, has really suffered. It's really, they're not getting that time that they need. So, um, and they're not making, you know, a lot of them confess to me that they're not even making minimum wage. If they, if they mm. factored in their hours that they worked, they're not even making minimum wage. So, and that's embarrassing for them to admit, but I, they are not alone. I assure you, there are many business owners out there not making minimum wage working for themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, we need to think in a different way to be part of that 8%. Yeah, you want to be part of the eight percent. We want to make that. We want to make that uh, statistic not so scary because there are a lot of a lot of women coming into business now. There are a lot of um, you know populations that have not had the opportunity to um, to have businesses like they do today because times are changing. Thank goodness. Um, so we want people to be successful in business. I mean, small businesses. Uh, what are they responsible for like 60 70 percent of the jobs in America mm. um, and I'm sure that's um, it's, the, it's the same down in Australia like global yeah. a global um, I'm sure that has global reach so mm -hmm. yeah 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 uh, uh, it's yeah it's it's just it's it's insane that that uh, that people get that feeling I you know the well the problem is is we're, we're you know if you don't if you aren't grown up around business owners right or you you don't have that in your background or, or even if you don't know friend if you don't have friends that are business owners right that can talk on a personal level uh, about confidential things that are like you know hey like this is what went wrong this is how uh, you know, things are, are progressing or, you know, here's some, what I tried and it didn't work, you know, things like that. It, 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 if you, if you're isolated to that level, then you're gonna, you're gonna have a bad time because <laughs> totally. you're going to yeah. feel like you're isolated. You're going to feel like you're never going to get ahead. Um, and that like, you're like, yeah, I mean, I'm making money, but I'm not making enough money or, or you really aren't making enough money because you don't really know your numbers well enough to understand that. Like, yeah, we're, we're doing the revenue, but we're not actually making any profit because, mm. uh, maybe my numbers are wrong in the system. You know, what, what things cost are wrong or what, um, my perception of what things cost are wrong mm -hmm. uh, or the way we're doing the math because we didn't do a double check. Look, I, I'm, I'm all for being open and transparent uh, for, for that kind of stuff because that's how we get better, right? That's how we learn. If we, if, you know, we don't all know it, even people that are, um, you know, great at business, uh, look at, look, you know, look at the example of Shark Tank, right? Like you, you, if you watch enough Shark Tank, you'll understand that there's certain sharks there that will not get into certain businesses. Cause they're just like, I don't have any experience in that field. Yeah. I can't help you. I'm out. And it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. cool. But like you took chances on other places probably cause you had some kind of interest and it's, it wasn't in that much money for you to like cut your teeth on it. Right. So there's, there's going to be opportunities for you to learn. And that's what we, we pay with, right. Is our time when we make those mistakes and money. Um, money. Hopefully more time than money. Hopefully, but just because uh, it, it's time day. doesn't doesn't mean that that's a great thing either. Though, like people will say, I want to spend time because it's not you know it's not coming out my pocket. But let me share my, in my first business, um, which was a, a, a I had a dancewear store, so a retail store. I was also running a dance studio um, as well. So I had two two uh, businesses. One ran in the day because the store was open in the day and the and I was teaching dance at night. So I was working essentially two jobs at that time with minimal staff, so minimal staff, teaching, no people in the shop. And my time, I decided very quickly, was worth more than the money because I was heading to burnout town. So there was no way I was going to be able to grow that business if I didn't change the way I was thinking, figure out how to bring staff in, figure out how to delegate so that I could get on to doing what I needed to do and grow the business. So, you know, if, if you want to sit there and say, oh, well, it's different for you because come and have a chat to me. I've been there. I've mm -hmm. done it. I hit burnout. I hit yep. where I there. resented my clients, resented my business. I've been all those places. So if you want to know, well, all three of us I know have got similar stories. So if yeah. you are feeling trapped and you don't know how to get out, come and speak with us because we've actually, we've done this the hard way and um and we'd love to help you
Yeah, we're just trying to speaking for myself. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm no, trying to keep absolutely. people from making the the painfully expensive, costly mistakes that <laughs> I have made in the past. Um, and I, I'm sure I'll continue to make mistakes because that's just life. But um, and you know, and the other thing is, it's not you know, business is not an exact science. I mean, Joe, you brought up Shark Tank, and it, again, if you watch Shark Tank enough, you know that they they pass on businesses that they think are stinkers, and later those businesses succeed, and vice versa. They invest in businesses they think are winners, and those businesses don't succeed for one reason or another. So there is no exact science. All I can Mm. say is that if you don't delegate, if you don't have systems, um, then your business really doesn't have much of a chance whatsoever um, to give it the best chance of success. Every, this applies to every business. You need the CEO mindset, you need systems, and you need to delegate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, was there anything else you wanted to fill in there before we uh, jump over to... uh, Oh, just that Brent said he (laughs) missed a good one, but that's okay, Brent, because you can catch us on Apple Podcasts. And when you're there and you listen to the episode, feel free to give us a rate and review. So so real quick, (laughs) before we go any further, I want to admit that I made a mistake. And one of the reasons I've been looking over at this screen, because I I just noticed that uh, one of the issues with our feed was that we only had a maximum of 10 episodes in our feed. But we this is episode like thirty six or well, that, that's just how it like how that. it displays though right it's not that we no don't. no 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 that's no, that's, how, in the that's setup. total like yeah the whole feed will only show the last ten episodes so um you know I I'll, I'll take the I'll take the blame for this one but uh, apparently maximizing the the feed which should be a maximum of three hundred episodes showing every single episode that we've done today because we haven't gotten to three hundred episodes yet that'll be the day uh you know so that's uh one of the this is hashtag joe's fault so uh, but that's okay we're not pointing the finger because i'm gonna say i didn't do it so i can't point the finger because i didn't even do it in the first place (laughs) but but i what i can say is i have already updated the the feed and made it so that uh apple is looking for the refreshed feed so hopefully within the next half hour or so it will show it will reflect the complete feed uh, as of right now, it is not showing up on their website, but it might in the in the podcast app. I'd have to check there. Well, I'm I don't know about you, but I cannot. I'm not sure if I can handle fame, so I'm a little afraid of what's going to happen now. I think you're, I think you're in the wrong <laughs> chair. <there. laughs> I think you'll be fine, Jen. I'm pretty I don't sure know. you'll be fine. I don't know. <laughs> just get that big, beautiful dog of yours to protect you. You'll be just fine. <laughs> Thanks, Brent. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's like, but okay. Well, that's that'll be interesting because we were um, we realized before we got on today that we've been really remiss in asking people to review Great the show review. and also to let you know that this isn't the only format. We are on uh, anywhere that you listen to podcasts. You can get the audio feed of this show so if you missed us or you just you know want to listen again um i don't know why you would but i was gonna say i'm not sure why you'd want to do that but if you do if you do if you do um that's how that's how you that's how you would do it go to go to business geeks uh podcast business geeks podcast.com scroll down a little bit and it'll show you all the different ways that you can subscribe from apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, uh one of the number of android uh, solutions, or you can just click the RSS feed and get that plopped into your uh, podcast player of choice. Because I, I, I just, dis- I despise the wherever you get your podcast from, because that just seems so <laughs> passive aggressive, and like I don't really care. Oh, I but just I be- care. Well, I think it's just get because it. <laughs> we can't go from Apple, from Google, from Amazon, from Overcast, from. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Though I don't know we're we're not on Amazon yet. I gotta I gotta fix that. I have I keep forwarding the email back to myself to uh, boomerang the email to myself to. Well, we to can't do even that. get Amazon in Australia. You know, it's only in the US. Really? Oh. Yeah. Leon and I are very unhappy. We just get so forgotten about down here. Like, <laughs> so far, you're so far down. Just so far. I know, right? We're so <laughs> far down south. <laughs> Oh, look, see, look, I'm tearing up now. I just... <laughs> oh, over Amazon. <laughs> well, Joe, I just want to defend myself because you insulted me just now when you said that you didn't like it when I said wherever you listen to your podcast and that's passive aggressive. Oh. I, 
I don't see it that way. I see it as I don't want to assume I know where you listen to your podcast and I don't want to dictate where you listen to your podcast. So I'm, it's my job to distribute <laughs> the podcast in all the places so that it's as convenient as possible. And we do distribute the podcast in all of the places. <laughs> the we, place. we do. We do. We got to get on Amazon. But uh, other than that, we we do. I, I would just, I just, the, the, the wording, it just gets to me, right? So it's, uh, your podcast player of choice, or uh, the you know something to that effect, not not the or or you know Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your like, it's it's so demeaning to anyone who's not on Apple Podcasts. Oh, I <laughs> like, no. it's so interesting how we perceive Isn't the English it, language right? differently. It is, it is interesting. <laughs> hmm, it interesting. is interesting. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> Jen, what's yeah. uh, what's grinding your gears this week? Okay, I have to narrow this it down. Week. This Darn week. It. This yeah, week. Actually, do we need to narrow it down to today in the past hour? <laughs> okay. I, I I feel like I'm always the one that has something and and I'm also I also feel that I'm also the only one that gets so upset about the things that I'm upset about. But this week it is it is the person who posts on Facebook if you care about XYZ you will copy and paste this message <laughs> to your Facebook profile. My first seven friends that paste it, I know you really care about whatever issue. So that alone was really driving me nuts because I, I don't like people telling me what to do and, and saying, well, if you copy and paste this meaningless bit of text, you care about this big issue in life. No, that I'm not doing anything to help that issue by copying and pasting. I, it, it's almost like those, um, the cha- it feels like chain, chain, chain mail, yeah, right? Like, it, is, mail, yeah. it is. It is. It's well, then modern I, chain mail. <laughs> well, then I looked into it because I was like, these posts are always kind of weird. Like, what is the end game? Like, what's behind these copy and paste posts? And then I found this source um, saying that you, you really shouldn't copy and paste Facebook posts because one, um, it might there might be a phishing scam a, a, a associated with it. Like, they're just trying to like, search the post of all the people that copied and pasted it. And then so they can target you and try to, you know, sell you some worthless crap. Um, also, where, there's more reasons. Can you scroll down? Because I can't remember yeah, all yeah. the reasons. But I just, I felt so legitimized, which is so rare. Self-selection. That's where they, where people are marketing to you and, and you don't even know what you're doing with your life. Um, so, so you've seen these, it's like, you know, you know, a thousand prayers, you know, please like this. Um, you're also spreading hoaxes. That's, this is the big one. This is like my, yeah. you know, my topic mm-hmm. du jour mm-hmm. is like, you know, all the misinformation that we're, um, unknowingly with the best intentions, we're spreading mm-hmm. misinformation. I mean, we've all been guilty of it. I don't know if I have, but I'm very, you know, critical. I, I, I try to look at things on a deeper level. But, you know, like once you copy and paste the text, right, you you lose the original source of the information. And we've all seen the the post, like there's a nurse and it's a copy and pasted text and it's all about like COVID. And I'm pro-mask, you know, I, I'm taking this you very seriously. But as a critical thinker, I'm like, but where is this really a nurse? Is this nurse really say that? Because I have no way to track the original post or poster mm-hmm. to legitimize yeah. it. Because there's all these, all this bot like information going around. And also, it's, just, it's a rabbit hole. It's like, a rabbit I've, I've hole. done it. I've done it. I've been there. Like, we all you know, have them. end sure. up on Snopes and all the, all the references yeah. from there. And it's just like, they they don't even care. You could post about anything uh, to refute anything, and they'll just be like, "Oh, that's fake." Yeah, you <laughs> so know. Like, and, oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. This is there's plenty of sources, you know, quoted that are reputable, uh, but they're they're all fake. They're all making it. They're all. It's just it. mm-hmm. it's just fake. It's just <laughs> and just the whole like oh like trying to guilt me into like not copying and pasting like oh yeah I'm pro suicide oh okay, I didn't copy and paste it you know but so you know I'm like I'm come on like. It, let's just stop this nonsense. Just yeah. stop it. This is this is why you know Facebook is turning into a cesspool of just crap. It's mm-hmm. because of things like this. Just stop it. Be careful of what you post. Just take a few extra seconds and and think about does it even have an original source? Can you track it down to a legitimate source before you share it? Because just because somebody copies and pastes it doesn't mean it's true. Yeah, <sighs> that's my that's my grind my gears, folks. Well, yeah, did you? Have you seen those links? It was a bustatroll.org or whatever. No. Have you seen those links? So so people will post these links, though, and it, they're like clearly 
fake stories they're like obviously it's like the onion but it's not called the onion it's it's called bust a troll and people will i've seen so many of these articles like posted to other people's walls and i'm like are they doing this ironically or are they oh look i i told you obama was a bad guy here's that post about it and it's like well you posted it from a site you didn't you didn't actually read what it was about did you yeah or what, yeah you know what the site the, that it's clearly a, a, a um what's the what's a parody site or or or, or something to that effect right do you so, know i've seen something that there's something like 90 something percent of people that that share things have never re read the actual blog post that they're sharing they actually only see the title i'm like are you kidding me yeah <laughs> That's yeah, just, that's yeah. crazy. You and never know what could be in there. What's even worse are the people that comment on it without reading it. And without it's so reading it. <laughs> and, and it's obvious that they haven't read it. But yet yeah. they have such a strong opinion. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so, social media is is funny and horrible and wonderful. And it's <laughs> all of those things at the same it is, time. It is, a, it is a whole new world. It yeah. is a whole new world. Uh, speaking of which, Apple has updated uh, our our feed to, to reflect the last, uh, so far, 32 episodes. I guess we're a, a little behind on getting them posted. But, uh, but yeah, so now you can get all of the episodes uh, of our show on, on – should be everywhere. Uh, if it's not now, soon, because the RSS feed is fixed. So Fabulous. Ding -ding. So, yeah, Fabulous. ding ding for mistakes and and correcting those mistakes, and that is what mm -hmm. it's all about. People figuring out where the mistakes are and correcting them. Yeah, uh, if you're not making is... mistakes every day, you're not go you're not going hard enough. That's, That's my right. motto. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And uh, Brent says everything is too long. Didn't read uh, these days. Oh though. my goodness, I didn't even know what that. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah, I've seen it everywhere and think, what are they? What are they writing? <laughs> at some point, you're you're just like you're embarrassed I'm to ask. Old. Like, no, yeah, I'm just like, how old are you? I'm I'm TLDR old. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. I love Speaking it. Speaking of of uh, TLDR, uh, Jen, who is getting your lunch money this week? Ah, lunch money is going to Rowan Tree. They are a co-working and co-growth space. They happen to have a physical location in the Northern Virginia area in Herndon, Virginia, for those of you that are familiar with that town near me. Um, but they also have a virtual membership and they have built such a beautiful community. Uh, they focus on women uh, business owners, but they are open to all. And so they do have some some male members and family memberships, but they ha do such a tremendous job of, of supporting uh, their community of mostly women business owners. Um, they've been there for them every step of the way during COVID. They offer opportunities to not just learn, but to to teach. They have all, you know, they do yoga, they do outdoor, acti like safe outdoor activities. They do online you know, uh, gatherings uh, with intention behind them. They're just, um, I, it's run by two women who I, I completely admire as people and as business owners. And as you can imagine, um, this business has has suffered because of COVID, because they were an in-person co in co-working space. And they've done so many ways to pivot and to keep their community alive that I admire them so much. I encourage you, even if you are not in the Northern Virginia area, to look at their their virtual membership. If you want to be surrounded by women who just have an abundant, giving, open mindset about business and are so into helping each other be successful in, in what they are endeavoring to do, um, I highly recommend them. So it's um, workrowan.com is their website, and it's Rowan Tree is the, is the business. Oh, that, that's that's cool. you, that's you know, awesome. Rowan University is down the street from me. <laughs> uh, unrelated, but unrelated, yeah, unrelated, There's, yeah. Unrelated. I I like them, and uh, they are a strategic partner with Spirit. I am happy Ooh. to say so. Um, we offer a discount for Spirit services to their members, and they do the same for us. So uh, I, we just have a great working relationship with them, and it's all because I you know admire them so much. It's fantastic. Yeah. That is fantastic. Happily give them my lunch and money any day of the week. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> love it, love it, love it. All right, well, we uh, we got to get out of here. It's been it's been lovely. Thank you everybody for watching. Amy, Jay, Brent Basham, Tim Gillette. Uh, thank you all for joining us live. And uh, please go and leave us a rating and review. We need some more love on uh, Apple Podcasts for sure, or on Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast mm. player of choice. That's how you say it. Uh, that's the right way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we've been told, Jen. We have been told. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode of the Business Geeks podcast, please share it with the business geek in your life. Send us your questions and suggestions to questions at businessgeekspodcast.com. Catch us next week. Uh, I'm not sure exactly sure of the time, but you know the place. We'll be here. Uh, looking forward to it. Have a great week, everyone. Stay safe and get out and vote tomorrow if you haven't already done so. Take care.